Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Seven Draws to Six, and I am the DM for Seventh Roll. And uh, it's been a little bit since I've done one of these, which can be seen by the fact that everything's messed up. Um, so uh, at this point, when I'm recording this, uh, the entirety of the Elemental Master up until version 0 0.5.6 should have been uploaded. Um, but in those couple of weeks, I've, you know, been kind of thinking and kind of, you know, homebrewing a little bit more. Uh, and I figured, you know what, let's make a little bit of a follow-up video to this um, to kind of, you know, add a couple of new things. So this video is going to talk about two things. First of all, it's going to talk about uh, 0 0.5.7, which is technically a small version that I created very soon after I created the um, 0 0.5.6 after the elemental negative changes. And then there is the 0 0.6.1. Now, why is it a new version? Because it also includes a new subclass. Uh, I actually uh, made the fifth subclass for this, not the Puppet Master, which was in here originally, but a completely new one. So let's have a look at both of those. So first of all, we're going to go to the changes from 0 0.5.7, which is the energy container uh, feature. So let's start with that. Um, so as a lot of you guys who, who saw the previous videos of this uh, might remember, uh, in uh, the original version, there was a feature called area control, which pretty much allowed you to change a small area uh, into something else. And originally, I wasn't really a big fan of that feature anymore because I noticed that it was very limited in use. And uh, I remember that one of my players actually stopped um, at a level five elemental master and then started taking cleric levels in part because that feature to him just didn't really feel impactful. Originally, I switched it to uh, level nine alongside with switching tools of the trade level six, which I think is a fun little feature. And then I said I was going to change up feature number nine. Um, the other two features that I wasn't 100% sure of, Tongue of Worlds and Primordial Transformation are still the same, but this one has been changed. So uh, your level nine, you now get energy container. The thought behind energy container is that you take a little bit of energy um, elemental energy and put it inside of a container for future use. So there's four. So pretty much um, every long rest or by spending three affinity points. Uh, well, I should probably start. You can create a container out of earth, dirt, clay, or some other material. This takes you an hour and 10 gold pieces. So you create one container. Every long rest or by spending three affinity points, if you have this container on you, you can fill it up with elemental energy from one of the basic elements of which you have the elemental affinity. So this is still important. I should probably actually think about it. Uh, I'm going to have the elemental affinity as stated in the elemental feature. I think it's still elemental control, right? I keep forgetting the names of my own features which is great yes elements of um according to the uh, element the container can then gains the corresponding effect so you can add a kind of you can imagine this is like you have like a potion bottle you can put like kind of alchemist's fire in there you can put uh like a special healing draft in there uh you can put these kind of like um, how do I put this like this, this like almost dirt and clay kind of looking potion. And you can pretty much just make it like, there's an item right like that, that like when you uncork it, it like <laughs> blows this giant wave of wind towards somewhere. Those are kind of the four things that you can kind of base it on. So fire as an action, the, po uh, the person holding the container can open and throw it at any spot within 60 feet. Any creature within 15 feet of the target must make a dexterity saving throw, taking damage equal to a number of d6s. That number is equal to the Elemental Master's proficiency bonus. So, seeing as you're level 9 when you get this feature, you'll start out with 46 points of damage. 4d6. I, I always hope that I, not, I don't say 4d6. 4d6 uh, points of damage, which on average equals up to like about 14, right? Yes, 14 points of damage. Which isn't much, but you know, 
Water, a person can absorb the energy in this container themselves as a bonus action, use it on another target, and touch raise it as an action. Pretty much this is a healing potion. Um, and you heal someone a number of hit points equal to a d4 times the elemental master's proficiency bonus. So you start out with, you know, 4d4 healing as a bonus action, or heal someone else 4d4 as an action. Earth, uh, you can give someone a C equal to the elemental master's proficiency bonus until the end of their next turn. So pretty much this is like... You know, uh, you can do it as a bonus action yourself, give it to someone else as an action. Technically, you can give this potion to someone else and just give them, you know, you could give this to the tank and be like, here, take it. And then once they start feeling like, okay, we're being surrounded, look, and they get, you know, as a bonus action, you get a shit ton of AC. Uh, so you start out with a plus four to your AC, which I think is okay, uh, especially since it's only until the end of their next turn. And smart opponents that kind of know about this can ignore the target with the giant amount of AC, so just go for other targets that have less defense. Plus, this doesn't do anything against saves. And then air as an action, you can kind of open the container, blowing away every target in a 30 feet cone. All those targets must make a strength saving throw or be blown away a number of feet equal to five times the elemental master's proficiency bonus. So this starts out at 20 feet, 25 feet, and then goes up to so a lot of this kind of scales with your proficiency bonus. I kind of like that in, in this. Um, and I do think this is this is an interesting feature that you can do some stuff with. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are just going to go like water and earth for this. But I have the feeling that a lot of the like pick an element features kind of just are going to have preferences. And you're going to kind of have to pick like, you know, what features do you want to get? Like the air air. I don't know how many people are going to use air as like a base, but if you want to use air or, you know, if you want to use like cold, you do need to get your hands on air at level 11. So it, it depends. Um, but I think this is, this is a better feature. This feels better. Uh, the one thing I'm thinking about is making this D force plus one, just to be like in line with healing potions. I think that'd be cool. But, um, you know, you pretty much get like a free healing potion every day, which I think is fine like one healing potion you also need to spend your bonus action to drink it you know um i think it's fine personally at least at the moment you guys can always give all right so that is the 0.5.7 change right so then we go to the interesting part namely the 0.6.1 change which is the reason that we're actually at 0.6.1 and after this, probably at 0.6.2, because I am going to note that as a new change. Uh, the um, uh, I'm probably going to make the 0.6.2. The fifth subclass, as you can probably glean from the title, is the Path of the Lightning Lord. Now, the Path of the Lightning Lord, one of the things that I had been wanting to do was I wanted to allow lightning as an element, right? So technically, there's a lot of quasi-elemental planes. Um... The thing is, lightning in uh, originally when when I originally created this class, lightning was actually the fusion between air and fire. A uh, reason for that being that I knew the elemental setup from um, what was it from Grandia. Uh, I've never played Grandia. I just know Grandia, and I like their elemental system a lot. Then uh, you kind of also have the Avatar version, where fire is pretty uh, where lightning is pretty much a fire um thing that you can do uh but in the um actual like lore of D, &D the lightning plane the lot lightning quasi elemental plane is actually the uh combination plane of the positive elemental plane which we already have a subclass for and the air elemental plane i was thinking originally of making this some sort of a like prestige class where like if you were an elemental positive you were like able to and you had a uh, air affinity you were able to pick this up and kind of get lightning lord abilities the thing is i think i prefer this because prestige classes first of all aren't really canon in fifth edition although i do really like them personally um but i was like eh, it might be easier to just do it like this you know Gives me a couple of uh, easy features to set up. So, you know, easy enough. Sorry. So let's go through this quickly, shall we? So we'll start off with 
Uh, the Path of the Lightning Lord is a path followed by those who want to gain the power of control of one of the most powerful elements in existence, lightning. These elemental masters are pretty close to those of the elemental positive masters. This is because of the quasi-elemental plane of lightning lies between the elemental plane of air and the positive elemental plane, energy plane. I think that's... The wielders of lightning are a lot more destructive than those of their counter. This subclass is meant to be sort of a melee support class, and you'll see where that kind of comes from. So first of all, Lightning Strike. So when you choose this path to level 3, your connection with the Lightning Elemental Plane allows your range of elemental powers to grow. This is very similar to the positive and the negative. Pretty much, you get an additional damage type for your Elemental Blasts, Lightning, of course. And whenever you use the Lightning version of your Elemental Blast cantrip, you get a new uh, feature. Namely, whenever you hit a target with your Lightning version of your Elemental Blast, um, that target will be electrified as it's called and what does electrified means whenever a target is electrified if you attack them you get to add a d4 to your attack roll so this is kind of the inverse of like guidance and bless right guidance and bless allow you to give a d4 to someone so that person now every single time they make an attack or an ability check they add a d4 here it's the opposite whenever you hit a specific target then you get the d4. So, you know, this can help out allowing other people to kind of hit these specific targets. However, of course, you also get the burst ability from level two. So what this does is instead of just being like, oh, you get to add a d4, now what you can also do is you can spend affinity points, right? Uh, you can spend like one affinity point to increase the d4 with d6 you can spend two affinity points to make it a d8 so this is pretty much meant as kind of this element where like you can allow all of your friends to have a far easier time to hit the target you can kind of see this as like there's lightning th running through their body so they're kind of like you know stuck in that position have a lot harder of a time dodging out of the way you have a little bit of an easier time finding the spots where you can hit them that's what this ability really represents is you give others an easier time to hit the target. And by spending affinity points, you can keep making it easier. So one of the affinity point allows you to add a d6, two a d8, three a d10, four a d12, and five a d12 plus one. Why? Because we're not going from a d12 to a d20, and I didn't want to say a d14. Uh, av on average, by the way, uh, for people who don't really know much about statistics, on average, this means that one additional affinity point will increase the average uh, of the die by one, which which is why this makes sense, right? Because the average of a d4 is two and a half, the average of a d6 is three and a half, the average of a d8 is four and a half, and so on. I don't know if anyone got that, but eh, that's how statistics work. Storm Warrior. When you choose this path at level 3, you are also trained enough to become an elemental warrior. You gain proficiency with heavy armor and martial weapons, similar to the path of the warrior. However, here you don't get the additional hit point. What you get here is um, kind of a similar thing to the bonus action that the path of the warrior had, where you, like, you were able to uh, embed your weapon with fire, water, whatever, and then whenever you made an attack, it was like you had done the elemental blast cantrip. It's similar here, only here what happens is whenever you hit a target with a melee attack, you don't have to use a bonus action first, but whenever you hit a target with a melee attack, you can kind of see this as the electricity going through the weapon and hitting the target. Meaning that whenever you hit a target with a melee attack, that target is treated as having been hit by your elemental blast with a lightning damage type. So what that means is whenever you hit a target with a melee attack, you can electrify them. That's really the way that this works. Um, pretty much this allows you to be a melee support warrior, right? You're kind of like, you're not really a tank because you don't have as many hit points. But what you can do is you can kind of stand in front of someone, hit them, and allow someone else to have an easier time to hit them. And you don't have to like literally go from a range and start casting Elemental Blast, which I think is. 
All right, then at level five, short circuits. Um, when you reach level five, you can push so much lightning through a target to immobilize it. Whenever you hit a target with a melee attack, you can spend one affinity point to have the target of your attack make a constitution saving throw against your save DC. On a failure, they are stunned until the end of your next turn. Uh, you cannot electrify the target with lightning strike or storm warrior abilities if you do this, at least not on the same attack. A target can be electrified and stunned at the same time. They can, however, not be um, electrified and stunned by the same attack. A lot of people will immediately realize this is pretty much the um, monk feature. This is a mon monk's stunning strike. The thing that I will say is I do think m monks is more powerful, right? Because monks have two attacks base. They have the extra attack feature. They have the bonus action attack in their unarmed strike and they have flurry of blows, which means they have an option of like doing four attacks and getting their, um, and getting their stunning strike off. Whereas here, technically base in the class, you only have one attack because you might notice that you don't get an extra attack in this class. It's something I've been thinking about. I've been thinking of allowing a secondary attack at level five as well, but I'm starting to feel like at that point I'm making the subclass too powerful. So I don't know. I've also been thinking of dropping this last uh, feature. I've been thinking of allowing someone to both electrify and stun them or when they're stunned they're electrified something like that not sure yet but uh i think that's going to be the way that we, we do it for now level seven when you reach level seven you've been able to see how to conduct large amounts of electricity through your body you can spend three affinity points to cast lightning bolt easy feature uh made sense in my opinion lightning bolts one of my favorite spells uh i actually really like 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 lightning bolt it. Um, fireball's boring, light mole's awesome. I'm going to get so much shit for that from one of my best friends, but fuck it. Uh, no, but um, I just think this is something that's fun. It also adds a little bit of damaging capabilities. The one thing I'm thinking about is maybe also adding the electrify effect on that. I think that could be cool. That when they fail the save against lightning bolt, they're also electrified. Uh, and you can spend additional affinity points and then also burst it. That's like the one thing I then storm rebuke uh that should probably be storms storms rebuke when you reach level 11 you get the ability to strike back against your opponents as if your weapons are drawn to them whenever you are hit with a melee attack make a rea uh, you can use a reaction to make a melee attack against the creature that hit you i mean really self-explanatory but um to kind of talk about the flair of this the way that i saw this feature was kind of as like someone hits you and the moment they do there's this contact between you and your targets and so now the electricity runs through you runs into your opponents and kind of that's how they then become electrified if they get hit or of course, if you want to use short circuit, you can, because that's kind of the fun thing. This works together with both uh, Storm, War uh, Storm Warrior and short circuit, right? You can attack them and just electrify them, or you can attack them and try to stun them. That's your choice. Uh, so this gives you like the ability of an additional attack. And then finally, the level 17 Ultimate Storm, very much reminiscent of uh, both the uh, Path of the Caster and Path of the Elemental Positive. When you reach level 17, you have learned the ultimate and lightning elements of magic. You can now cast Storm of Vengeance uh, at the cost of nine affinity points. And you can't cast it again until you finish a long rest. Um, I'm going to be honest. This is something I'm thinking of changing. Um, currently, I think it's cool. I've got to be honest. Um, I personally... How do I say this? I personally don't necessarily like this as much as I, I, you know, I don't like the Storm of Engine spell as much. I think it's just, in a lot of cases, an inferior Meteor Swarm. I know that there's a lot of people who will argue against that, um, which is why I'm leaving it like this for now. I do think it's a cool feature, uh, or a cool spell, sorry, and cool feature because of that, um, but it's not my favorite. Um, I think this still needs some tweaking. Honestly, the entire subclass still needs some tweaking. I've also been thinking of like maybe pushing short circuit to level seven and just making level five, you can make a second attack that so you can kind of electrify, electrify. 
Um, that's also something I've been thinking about. It's just dropping the lightning bolt spell. Um, because it doesn't really feel like it makes that much sense right now. I'm not sure. Um, this is like a work in progress. This is something that I'm still going to be working on. Um, actually, technically, I don't have to make this a 0 0.6.2 version yet, right? I barely changed anything. Yeah, I'll just leave this as 0 0.6.1 and make a new version. But yeah, so this is the uh, current version of this subclass. If you want to know the main class, there are a couple of videos before this. I uh, hope you guys will enjoy this class if you do try it out. Um, I don't know how quickly I'm going to make another video on this because I don't really have inspiration for other subclasses. I might bring Puppet Master back, but I don't think so. I don't, I'm not a big fan of my own Puppet Master. So, Puppet Master subclass. By the way, I, I don't have a Puppet Master. I am a Puppet Master. DM. I'm rambling. But what? So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been 7 Draws to 6. Hope you will enjoy this class. If you did, please leave a like or comment or subscribe or whatever. Do your thing. Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been 7 Draws to 6. Until next time.